deck of the first we are uh, going to uh, discuss about the uh, etiopathogenesis of the acute coronary syndrome basically acute coronary syndrome is composed of patients with the acute myocardial infections infractions with st segment elevations on their presenting electrocardiogram and those with the unstable angina and non st elevation of mi it is one of the medical emergency because acute coronary syndrome is responsible for this uh, that you know, over around 10% or case so th this is the reason that we really need to learn this uh, very thoroughly about this acute coronary syndrome in this uh, today we are not going to discuss about the pathogenesis investigation or management component out of it because the topic itself is a very large so we are going to discuss only etiopathogenesis what are the causes for that acute coronary syndromes and if the doctor can identify that uh, acute coronary syndrome and intervention can be uh, is available and can be applied on that patients then definitely the mortality can be reduced drastically and it is therefore need to be identified that acute coronary syndrome so i would like to request dr binet again to discuss about this acute coronary syndrome especially on the atypathogenesis because the topic itself is very large uh, thank you so much dr biplab uh, the second topic again we are picking up today is of uh, high practical importance uh, that is atypathogenesis of acute coronary syndrome another very common presentation to emergency department as far as the uh, treatment principles are concerned everything stems from the etiopathogenesis so it's very important for us to read about etiopathogenesis only then we could understand what are the principles of therapy now uh, a normal artery chiefly consists of three components if we go from the luminal to the abluminal side that is the tunica intima the tunica media and the tunica adventitia as we read in our mbbs books the most important thing here is the endothelium it is a very simple yet a very complex layer of single cells that plays a very important role in this whole process of acute coronary syndrome several risk factors like smoking diabetes dyslipidemia especially elevated ldl low protective hdl obesity hypertension nutritional factors inactivity environmental and genetic factors all go on to promote atherosclerosis what happens at the microscopic level is is, is endothelial cell damage and this puts into action a dangerous cascade of events subsequently leading to acute coronary syndrome now a very important slide looks very complicated but is very important to understand because a large amount of you know all treatment principles are based on this so it's very important for us to look at this slide you know once you come across in textbook you'll say it looks too complicated and just you know overlook it so it's very important to understand this particular slide the first step is that within the circulation you have ldl that's a low density lipoprotein which is the bad cholesterol now this ldl gets internalized into the intima that is the second step in the presence of oxidative stress this ldl gets modified by processes like oxidation and glycation and results in the formation of oxidized ldl now the yellow thing is the ldl and you can see the one which is slightly browner this is the modified or the oxidated ldl this is the second step can okay okay fine okay uh, yeah now this was the ldl now this is the oxidized ldl uh this has got oxidation glycation in the presence of oxidative stress now 
simultaneously are also present smooth muscle cells the smooth muscle cells are also present within the intima in the presence of inflammatory mediators like interleukin 1 and the dysfunctional endothelium in the presence of you know risk factors like diabetes mellitus smoking etc what happens is you have increased expression on the endothelial surface of certain addition molecules these addition molecules are substances are you know like like the vascular cellular addition molecule that is vcam1 so you have oxidized ldl inside and now because of risk factors there is increased expression of receptors which are present on the surface of this dysfunctional endothelium now what happens is that the monocytes which are present within the blood they come and attach themselves onto these addition molecules and subsequently get internalized once internalized the substances which are playing an important role are you know substances like monocyte chemoattractant protein 1 mcp1 this helps in the internalization of this of this monocyte once inside the intima these monocytes are now called macrophages these macrophages normally also have got some amount of scavengers on their surface but once there is high amount of oxidative stress once there is oxidized ldl once there are risk factors the number of scavenger receptors which are also present on the surface of the macrophages also gets propagated extremely high and this oxidized ldl subsequently gets internalized into these macrophages and you have what is formation of a foam cell so ultimately what you have is a foam cell which is seen here these are the foam cells and subsequently you have got smooth muscle cell proliferation so two three things are happening in concert the foam cells are being formed and there is smooth muscle cell proliferation which is occurring subsequently there is release of lipid from these foam cells into the extracellular matrix and this released lip oxidized lipids along with the smooth muscle cells go on to form what is called a fatty streak the fatty streak is the first part in the formation of atherosclerotic plaque and this fatty streak subsequently just keeps on going higher and higher and a plaque is formed this is a more you know magnified view of the same process the monocyte adhering to the dysfunctional endothelium by vascular cellular addition molecule then penetrating inside because of monocyte chemoattractant protein once inside this monocyte is called a macrophage and they are activated by substances like the macrophage colony stimulating factor and they undergo activation and subsequent division they are converted they they uptake the oxidized ldl and are converted into foam cells the lipid gets extruded there is smooth muscle cell mitogens which just cause smooth proliferation and you have a plaque now what is the anatomy of an atherosclerotic plaque the anatomy of atherosclerotic plaque is that in the center it has a lipid core now this has got all the prothrombotic milieu which is present and this is lying on the surface of your intima and you have the lumen here the atherosclerotic plaque has also got certain other components which is the shoulder and the fibrous cap large amount of problems are also going on in this patient as regarded to the fibrous cap lot of metabolic changes are happening here and the site of this break is usually at the shoulder once there is a breach in the shoulder that will allow the blood to come in contact with the prothrombotic milieu the fibrous cap would have broken down there is exposure to the blood you have got all you know clotting factors here and you will have a clot formation large amount of work is going on into atherosclerotic plaque studies and in fact you will be surprised to know there is a full site which is available on the internet on vulnerable plaques okay now coming to the next step that is as i told you what is happening within the fibrous cap very important to understand a very complex slide again but you know often overlooked by the students now you have this lipid core which is here you have these you know inflammatory t lymphocytes which are there they secrete interferons which inhibit collagen synthesis number 1 making the fibrous cap more thinner if there is no structural element obviously the cap would become thinner similarly they cause release of certain substances like cd40 ligands which then act upon the foam cell or the macrophages which are there causing them to release certain collagen degrading proteins not only are they not allowing collagen to form they are also indirectly causing release of collagen degrading proteinases which break down the collagen again making the fibrous cap thinner not only is the t lymphocyte which is causing you know the you know the macrophage to do all these problems there are certain inflammatory mediators like interleukins tumor necrosis factor you know and macrophage colony 
accumulating factors which are causing all these problems to get propagated to a large extent. So, and as we all know, these are all inflammatory markers and there is no doubt now that atherosclerosis is an inflammatory process. If you study these patients, they usually have got high C-reactive protein levels. That is why if you give them statins, you in suppress the process of inflammation. So, very important to understand this slide because if you have a long question or if you have a short note or a viva voice, this will help you to understand what is the genesis of acute Cronin syndrome. So, a fatty streak just keeps on going up and up day by day and, and one day you have the formation of a established plaque. Now, there is a large lipid core, but you see the fibrous cap. The fibrous cap is quite thick and is protecting the lipid core from getting in interaction with the central lumen. So, this is a stable plaque. It is an established stable plaque. Now, plaques are broadly classified into two types. Either you could have a stable plaque or you could have an unstable plaque. Stable plaque we already saw has got a thick calcified cap and a smaller fatty core. Uh, vis a vis the unstable plaque has got a thin and vulnerable cap. The thin cap has been created because of the various metabolic changes that are happening. And this is the, you know, the thin vulnerable uh, uh, cap which will break up and will, you know, just explode and cause the acute coronary syndrome to happen. Apart from whatever changes are happening at the plaque level, the vascular endothelium cells has got multiple roles to play. It also helps to maintain a very important balance between anticoagulant and procoagulant mechanisms. The various anticoagulant mechanisms that are available are the release of substances like postacycline, thrombomodulin and apparent sulphates. vis a -vis, the procoagulants like von Willebrand's factor, tissue factor and plasminogen activity inhibitor. So, not only is it getting affected by inflammatory process and getting deranged, it has to play a very important role. Supposing, you know, there were endothelial dysfunction, again these things are also hampered. It could go either way. So, you have a, per, you have a perfect milieu which is now available which could create problems. So, a vulnerable plaque has been defined as a plaque which has got a high propensity to rupture. It is high in excess cellular lipid. The lipid core occupies a large portion of the plaque. The degree of cross-sectional stenosis usually is less than 50 percent. It has got a thin fibrous cap and a high macrophage density. In fact, all of us should be very proud that a large amount of work into vulnerable plaque has been done by one Indian pathologist, Dr. Renu Virmani, who is uh, at Armed Forces Center in America, although uh, placed there. Uh, she is a well-respected figure and well-known person in, in histopathology as far as acute coronary syndromes are concerned. Yeah, uh, I think, sir, I think, yeah. in this uh, session, we will stop here because uh, time is uh, not permitting us. Uh, in, in in these sessions, we have discussed mainly the plaque formation and uh, the pathogenesis of the plaque formation, which is the one of the major cause of the acute coronary syndrome.